I know it's hard to read, but it's supposed to say enemy. But on the flip-flop side of the uh, computer, I didn't realize I had to write it backwards. So I want you to play along with me for a little bit here this morning, okay? getting bigger oh my goodness what just happened what just happened something biblical just happened uh, if you can see my desk I got balloon splatter everywhere but I wanted to show you that this morning so I could give you a little concept about what scripture uh, says that we should be doing in our lives I don't know about y'all but I've kind of come to figure out the scripture is my golden rule It's the thing that I need to live by is the thing that no matter what happens will never let me down. Um, if you noticed on that balloon before I had blown it up, I had the word enemy written on it. Let me ask you a question. How many of you got enemies coming at you right now? How many of you got enemies that are hitting you at your doorstep? How many of them are accusing you? The, you know, the Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. How many of you have been hearing lies from the enemy saying, you're not going to make it through this time or you're not going to have enough finances or you might get sick or you might do this. The enemy will lie to you in a heartbeat. But there's a scripture in Psalm 68, starting in verses 1, it says, May God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his, fee or his, his foes flee before him. Now, that all sounds great, but how does that happen? Well, we've got to go back to the first three sentences. May God arise. All right, do you get what I'm saying? When we look and we see when it says, may God arise, how does that happen? We have to lift up God. We have to exalt the name of Jesus. We have to do all these things. We have to praise him. When we praise God, it activates him to arise in our life. And so what I didn't explain to you is that when I was blowing breath into that balloon, although the enemies were surrounding me, trying to suck the oxygen out of me, trying to suck the life out of me, you see, I kept blowing praises unto God. As I started giving my breath to something, my breath turned around and caused God to arise in my life. And when God arose, the enemy, what did it do? It scattered. It blew apart. It blew away. It was gone. It couldn't stand before the force of the praise that we give our God, our Father. You see, no one else is more worthy of praise. So some of you even say, well, pastor, that's all fine and dandy. You're a pastor. All right. What does that mean for me? Well, it means everything. You ain't got to be a pastor to praise God. Matter of fact, you just got to be a follower of Jesus. And if you're a follower of Jesus, you naturally learn to praise. Matter of fact, I look at Psalm, and when I look in through the Psalms, David wrote a good majority of the Psalms, and David was not only a shepherd, not only was he a uh, uh, worshiper and not only was a warrior but he was a king and a priest and so these things that we have to look at we understand that praise starts at the very bottom and david wrote in psalm 59 verses 16 through 17 says but i will sing of your strength in the morning i will sing of your love for you are my fortress my refuge in times of trouble oh my strength i praise to you 
You, O oh God, are my fortress, my loving God. Let me ask you a question. How much time have you spent praising God this morning, saying, I'm going to sing with all my strength in the morning? I'm going to sing of your love. I'm going to sing uh, that you're my fortress. I'm going to sing because in the times of trouble. These are, you see, these are the times that we pray. We are supposed to pray and praise constantly. You see, I don't know about y'all. Uh, my heart's just now starting to regulate from that balloon exploding. But you see, that's what happens when we praise an almighty God. When we praise an almighty God, the enemy is just blown away. Can you can you say an amen? Can you agree with me? I know some of you, I'm going to ask that you do me a favor. A uh, personal friend of mine, uh, Pastor Byron, um, he is uh, going through some hard times. For some of y'all that noticed or know, he was the uh, one of the guys we were helping raise stuff for. Uh, for coats and toys and stuff like that at Christmas time this year, uh, he came down with COVID-19, him and his wife both. Um, and so we're at a point to where we're trying to just uplift them and encourage them as a church. Matter of fact, uh, Pastor Brenda will be actually ministering for him in his absence this weekend online for them. Be praying for Pastor Brenda to bring a word for them, to be able to bring that church, that church some encouragement, some hope, and some love. But Byron, listen to me. We are supporting you 100% as Impact Cowboy Church. We believe in you, but yet we also know that it takes you praising God. And the more that you spend time praising God through the worst of times, through these bad times, all of a sudden the enemy will disperse. It will scatter as God rises in your life. So guys, this is a truth for all of us. Do me a favor. Let's pray this morning. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, you're so good to all of us. Father, we thank you that, Lord, as your word says, that you're a respecter of no man. Father, what you've done for others, you'll do for uh, for us. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name that, Father, all we have to do is ask. So today, Lord, we ask for all of these people that are here in Nacogdoches, Father, to be lifted up and they be protected. Father, I pray that our infection numbers start lowering and start going down. And that, Father, ultimately the healing, Father, will come through this land. And that healing is called revival. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that, Father, that you would pour forth a revival through this place. That, Father, the gates of hell could not withhold. That, Father, the gates of hell would flee and run. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that, Father, just the name of Jesus is enough to put enemies to flight. So, Father, we praise you in Jesus' name that churches will come together in unity and unison. Father, worshiping and praising and letting God arise so the enemy would scatter. So, Lord, we love you. We praise you. Lord, we speak blessings over each person that's hearing this message today. And, Lord, we ask that, Father, that you, first of all, Father, look down upon your church. Father, that you encourage us. Father, give us hope. Father, give us the opportunity to realize what we should be doing for you and how we may do it. So, Lord, we love you and we praise you. We glorify you in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. Bless you. See you later.